In today's lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on the special senses, and today we're going to focus on the ear. So what are special senses, just to remind us of that? Really, they're things like taste, smell, sight, hearing, and balance. They're things that occur in a certain localized area of the body, whereas touch is not a special sense because it's a generalized sense. You could touch things with your hands, with your elbows, uh, with your feet, etc. Whenever we have a specialized sense, we have special sensory receptors. Uh, they're very localized, con confined to a particular region. Today we're going to talk about those of the ear. Okay, so what are the major parts of the ear? Well, there's three main parts if we take it in a very crude sense. So there's the external ear, uh, there's the middle ear, and then there's the internal ear or the labyrinth. Uh, we can see the external ear, and we can see the middle ear uh, using uh, sort of a light appearing inside the ear, you know, to some degree. Uh, but we cannot really see the internal ear. Uh, so the external and middle are sort of, you know, visible uh, to a certain degree, at least middle is a little hard, but the internal is something that we're not able to see that well. Let's focus on the external ear a little bit. Okay, so when we focus on them, we want to look at different structures here. And so we do have the auricle, right, or the pina of the external ear. And this is something that helps you amplify information. If you ever put your hands there and cusp them around your ears, you'll see that you hear even better, right? So the auricle is sort of having that effect amplifying sound. The next part is the helix. These are the bumpy parts on the side of your ear. And these really are composed of elastic cartilage and they help uh, with uh, directions or cues as to where sounds are coming from. The lobule at the bottom is something that is uh, a structure that lacks supporting cartilage. So it just sort of hangs off the bottom of the ear uh, and has you know fat tissue inside of it as well. If we look here, all these structures that again are visible here are part of the external ear. Uh, you'll notice that we have the external acoustic meatus as well, this path, this tunnel where sound is traveling through. And then eventually we get to something called the tympanic membrane, which is highlighted in the middle ear. Okay, let's stop the story there. Let's go to the next slide and we'll continue it. Okay, can we take a look at the middle ear with a little more depth here? Let's look a little more closely at the middle ear. Some things that we want to talk about. Okay, so we do have the tympanic membrane, right? And this is basically uh, sort of your eardrum, or it is your eardrum. So when we say eardrum, it's the exact same thing as tympanic membrane. This is where sound vibrates off of, right? It hits this. And what happens is it hits the tympanic membrane, and then it causes these three different bones, uh, the, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes to all vibrate, right? And that's sending sound through them. Together, we refer to those three bones as the auditory ossicles. And this is something that, you know, you'll see in lab, too. Next, you'll notice that we have this structure that goes down here called the pharyngotympanic tube, or the auditory tube. And this is that structure where it's normally flattened, but you can open it by swallowing or yawning. This is what you're doing when you're in an airplane and your ears are popping, right? And you're yawning or chewing gum to help, you know, alleviate the air pressure, uh, you know, from one side of this tube to the other. That's that effect you see on an airplane. Okay, so let's continue. If we look further at the middle ear, this is sort of a zoomed up picture of what we saw before. Just want to note here that we do have that tympanic membrane, membrane right? This is a medial view of that. And that again is your, your eardrum. And then again, we have those three bones of the middle ear, right? The malleus, the incus, and the stapes. You'll also notice that you have these different muscles, right? And tendons that are connecting these bones to other structures of the ear. All of these are important in maintaining the integrity of the middle ear. Okay, let's move on now and take a look at the inner ear. So there's a few different things we want to note about the inner ear. The first is that we also call it the labyrinth, and it lies within something called the petrous part of the temporal bone. Uh, we refer to it as the bony labyrinth, and it consists of different cavities, right? And there's three parts. Uh, there's a semicircular canals, the vestibule, and then the cochlea. Also, you'll notice that we have this membranous labyrinth, right? A series of membrane, uh, sorry, membrane-walled sacs and ducts, right? Uh, and that fits within the bony labyrinth. And this consists of the semicircular ducts, uh, the utricle or saccule, and the cochlear duct. Another thing, if we continue that discussion about the membranous labyrinth, excuse me, the membranous labyrinth, uh, it's filled with something called endolymph. And then the bony labyrinth is filled with something called perilymph. And this perilymph is something that's continuous with the cerebral spinal fluid. In other words, it's connected to it. Whenever we say continuous, we mean connected to it. 
Some other things we want to note here. If we look at the semicircular ducts, right, in the semicircular canals, uh, you can see that this is basically houses information where we acquire uh, sensory uh, information if we're turning our head from side to side. If we look at the utricle in the vestibule, this is something that monitors head position and linear acceleration, this one right here. So I'll just write that down. Uh, remember, the inner ear is not only involved in just hearing, right, but it's also heavily involved in terms of balance. That's why we're discussing these things now. Uh, if you look at the cochlear duct right inside the cochlea, this one over here, this is what's involved in uh, hearing itself. So that's what has the receptors for hearing. Uh, so these uh, other ones here are really in, in, uh, involved in terms of balance, right, or uh, sensory info. Uh, the cochlear duct and the cochlea is what, involved, is what is involved in hearing. If we consider the inner ear further, it also helps us monitor head position something that's sort of interesting. And the way it does it is there's a structure called a macula, which contains receptor cells. And if we look at this, it monitors the position of the head when it's still. In other words, it contains columnar supporting uh, cells, right? And what happens is if you look over here, especially on the top left here, you're going to notice this uh, um, sort of this contrast, right, going back and forth between these pictures here. Uh, the first one here, you'll notice that we have something called an autolith membrane, autoliths, and hair cells. And what happens is you notice that these hair cells extend up into this fluid. This fluid contains uh, different types of uh, calcium carbonate crystals, which are called autoliths. You see all these terms on the top left. And what happens is basically these hairs are monitoring the movement of the fluid, right, uh, containing these crystals back and forth. And so as someone tilts their head, what's going to happen is the fluid's going to shift. It's going to bend the hairs. You can see they're bent this way as opposed to the other picture where they're like this. And that's what gives you the sense of the head moving. So in that manner, this uh, macula and these receptors help monitor the position of the head. There's some disorders we want to consider with hearing, too. So there's something called motion sickness, right, or uh, car sickness. And this is really sort of an uh, interesting theory. It's when, uh, you know, what you're seeing uh, mismatches, right, with other sensory inputs of the inner ear in terms of where your balance should be. Uh, so when you have unexpected movements that you can't really explain, like in a car or on a ship, that's where you get this motion sickness. Uh, there's Meniere's syndrome, which is a situation where the equilibrium is greatly disturbed. Uh, you have excess amounts of this endolymph uh, fluid inside the labyrinth. And then finally, there's deafness, and there's different types of deafness. Uh, there's conduction deafness, where in that case, uh, the sound vibrations cannot be conducted or cannot be moved to the inner ear. Uh, it could be resulted from a ruptured eardrum or tympanic membrane. Uh, there could be issues with the um, otitis media. Uh, or other situations as well. Then there's the other type of uh, deafness, and there's other ones too, but two of the main ones here, uh, sensory neural deafness. And in this one here, the sensory neuro, what happens is there's some type of damage uh, in any part of the audi auditory pathway. Uh, so, you know, it could be neural damage, uh, could be damage uh, in terms of some of the fluid-filled uh, sacs. Uh, you know, there's many, many types of uh, situations that could result from that. Uh, but really, that's, you know, sort of an accumulative deafness, something you would experience if you're involved in a marching band or any type of band and exposed to constant loud sounds. Or if you're a construction worker, uh, you would accumulate that over time as well. So these are the different types of disorders that we have in hearing. Uh, in class, what we're really going to focus on is putting all these things together that we talked about throughout this e-lecture and really making sure that we um, apply them to how someone hears. In other words, trying to break down just what are the steps that happen, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, et cetera, when you hear. What is the sequence of events that occurs? That's what we're going to really focus on in lecture. But I wanted to give you the background uh, to all of these different terms in this e-lecture, and then in class we'll take it to the next level. As always, make sure you proceed, or excuse me, before you proceed to the next lecture, make sure you understand, uh, you know, all the terms that we've discussed in this lecture.